Very good. Well, if you guys are uh, interested in drinking a lot of coffee tonight or water or snacks or whatever, feel free to get up um, uh, to go ahead and do that during our teaching. Tonight we're going to be um, traveling in a couple of different places of the Bible, and we're going to be talking about something that's really important for us as believers to consider. Um, there's so many uh, directions and commands for us in God's Word and this is one that I think that some of us sometimes will set on the table and think of it more as a suggestion uh, rather than a command. And that's waiting and waiting on God. And uh, one of life's most difficult commands to follow is to wait. And there's so many repercussions and consequences that have the opportunity to come our way if we are not patient um, with things. And uh, we consider um, Psalm 27, 4, which says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And, you know, as we consider our study in tonight, we are going to be in Psalm chapter number 27. You can turn in your Bibles there. Um, and we're going to talk about a few different verses there in Psalm 27. But I want to bring our attention to this word wait that's here in Psalm 27, verse number 14. And when we look at this word, you know, we, we sometimes have our minds um, programmed in a way to where, you know, we, we get used to seeing a word in the English language and we automatically just think that we know what it means, especially when we're talking about in God's word. And so I just want to give us a little bit of a... Uh, perspective check here as we consider this word wait as it appears here in Psalm 27 number 14. Now you remember that uh, there were some times where I was bringing out several different Strong's concordances that go right along with the King James Version of the Bible. If you get an exhaustive concordance it'll have every single word that appears in God's Word um, in the Hebrew and Chaldee and Greek dictionary. And so these um, definitions and whatnot that you can see up here are coming from the Strong's Concordance. And so this is how I would really encourage you. You know, we read the Word of God all the time. We get in and we study it. But we really need to have some time to tear it apart and really chew on it and meditate on it and really allow the words that God is communicating us to, to resonate in our hearts and minds. And so we consider waiting, and this word in the English language really has several different meanings depending on the, the context that it's in. But we're talking about the Word of God here, and in this particular verse, the, the Bible says, wait on the Lord. We are commanded to wait. You and I as believers in Jesus Christ are commanded to wait. Now, um, you know, for those that have served in the military, that's one of the first things that they teach you is patience. And they try and do all kinds of things to change your way of thinking around being idle and waiting for something to happen. Um, we've all heard this in life, patience is a virtue, right? Where's that, you know, where's that coming from? Where the, the world's perspective on why we should be patient? There's even a lot of benefits from a worldly perspective for us to be patient and wait. Um, one of those areas that I found as I was looking at different headlines that had to do with patience and people benefiting from patience, you know where 99% of the headlines were coming from? The sports world. And our society has really turned on its head, honestly. Um, you know, just type in patience pays off and just all kinds of sports clips about basketball teams and football teams and, and all kinds of different sports teams that are out there and dealing with how their plan and their approach to the game and them showing patience paid off in the long run for them. You know, a lot of times what football coaches will do is they will create something that's called a game plan before the game takes place. In fact, before the team even starts practicing for that opponent, they've already drawn up a game plan. And it's a way that they'll uh, try and dissect and go after beating their opponent. And a lot of times coaches, if they're not careful, as the game uh, begins to unfold and things don't seem to be going exactly the way they wanted them to go, They'll alter their game plan before they even get very far into the game. And coaches that do that, they see that um, changing your plan really does have some negative consequences. And so, hence these headlines saying, you know, patience paid off for these sports teams. That's just them sticking to a game plan. 
And then their game plan was a good one, so they ended up winning the game. But you know what? The patience that we're talking about and the waiting that we're talking about here, it's not a game. It's on how we approach life. And no matter what the world says about patience, we need to mind what the Word of God says about patience and what we ought to do when it comes to waiting. Now, I did find one thing that you shouldn't really wait on. This was the only news headline that I said that patience does not pay off. You know what it is? Anybody want to guess? Yeah, delaying salvation, a big one, but they don't write about that in the headlines, right? That is the most important one in this world is people delaying in that, and that does not pay off in any way, shape, or form. Um, but delaying to take advantage of your Social Security benefits. <laughs> Why that was in there, I don't know. But, you know, you wait on everything else, and if you wait too long to collect your Social Security benefits, um, if you wait till you're 70 years old, start collecting them, boy, they'll give you like 24 to 32% more money than if you'd have started drawing it when you were 62, 63, 64, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I just thought that was kind of funny. I thought I'd throw that out there. Don't wait on your Social Security um, because it may not pay off for you. But as we consider this word wait on the Lord here, um, we look at the meeting and this is to wait for. This is the original word here as we see it in Psalm 27, 4, which is kava. And this here um, is the original uh, Hebrew word um, for that. Um, we can see the phonetic spelling, uh, kava. Um, part of speech, it's a verb. That means it's an action word. It means even though God's telling us to wait on something, it requires action on our part. Waiting is just not sitting on your hands, okay? This is an action word. And uh, from the uh, concordance, as we look at the details of what this word wait means, the short definition is to wait for. But in all reality, it's to look. It's to patiently tarry or to wait for or to wait on or to wait upon in expectation of something. And as we consider waiting on the Lord, we're talking about waiting on His promises. Amen? waiting on His timing and His way of doing things to come to pass in our life. As we study God's principles and He, and he tells us to wait and be patient and enter into prayer with Him and not be hasty in making decisions, He's telling us that because it's a benefit for us. And He will bless our patience as we choose to wait on Him. And he says, after we wait on him, after we look patiently, expecting that God is going to do something, be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. And that's the amazing thing about waiting on God. You know, a lot of times when people wait in the flesh, they become impatient and anxious and antsy. And, and once that passes, they start getting upset and angry and, and uh, not wanting to tolerate a whole lot of anything. But remember this, God says to wait on him, um, looking patiently, tarrying, expecting something. This very same word found in Psalm 130, verse 5, where the Bible says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. And that's when we're considering our waiting on the Lord in this definition here, looking patiently understanding the Word of God and relying on Him, even though it doesn't feel right to our own body. I'll say this, as we consider even temptation in our life, we need to lay aside our emotions and our feelings. And I don't mean lay them aside like, well, they're not going to exist anymore. They are still going to exist, but you have to ignore them. Amen? You have to give the Word of God the first place in how we're going to respond to things and not worry about how this old fleshly body feels about it. Because it's going to feel rough about a lot of different things um, as we uh, uh, walk through our lives. Now in contrast to this very verse here, and we'll get back to Psalm 27 in just a moment, but in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 18, this very same word, wait, spelled the very same way. The Bible says this, and therefore will the Lord wait, that He may be gracious unto you. And therefore will He be exalted, that He may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for Him. 
Now we consider this weight right here. This is what we just talked about in the previous verse there. But when we talk about this weight right here, when I look at the definition of this, God is not waiting like we are waiting. Amen? We are waiting in expectation for His fulfilled promises and for the principles of His Word to be uh, worked out in our life as we choose to walk with Him. And we see that if we act honest and upright before men and before God, that God is going to bless us in a way that um, we would never experience if we choose not to do that. So when we consider this word wait right here in Isaiah 30, verse 18, the meaning of this word, to wait or await. A little bit of a difference. Kahaka says this uh, Chaldean word here. Amen. And uh, we look at this, it's the same thing. It's a verb, isn't it? It requires some action on God's part. The short definition, to wait or await. To adhere to. We think about from God's perspective, Him waiting. We're talking about here that the Lord, uh, and therefore will the Lord wait that He may be gracious unto you. And so that God might be long-suffering to us. As He sees us, at times behaving in a way that he's saying, what are you doing? Uh, I already outlined it right here for you. What's going on? And it'd be easy for uh, the creator of this universe to justify wiping out mankind for dis being disobedient. And we consider what's going on in our world today and all the sin that's being flaunted in God's face. God would be justified in wiping this place out and being done with it as far as I'm concerned. But he waits. Amen? Now this meaning here for this is to, to tarry, to long, to tarry, to await. Apparently akin to shaka through the idea of piercing. Now you think about Jesus Christ being on the cross and them nailing Him to the cross. And as those nails pierced through His hands, um, instead of Him calling a legion of angels down to rescue Him there, He waited upon that cross, didn't He? And we consider God as He waits and is long-suffering to us word. Listen what it says here. To adhere to. Hence, to await. To long, to tarry, to wait. And God is adhering to His word, His promises that He's given to us. He's not going to go back on them. Amen? And when we consider just reading through the word of God, if we don't tear things apart in a way that um, really gives us a deeper understanding of, of His words, we can miss out some, on some things in Scripture. Amen? God does not wait in the same way that He is commanding us to wait. And we need to understand that. Now yet again, another verse found in Exodus chapter 21 and verse number 13. This is yet another wait spelled the very same way. The Bible says in Exodus 21.13, And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. Now when we consider a man lying in wait, this is, this is the same exact word, isn't it? And we could read over this verse and allow our minds just to go, yeah, 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 we're not supposed to wait around the corner in a bush. But you know what? This is very different than the first meeting of waiting on God, isn't it? In expectation of uh, standing on God's promises, watching His principles being uh, worked out in our life, and watching uh, blessings come from that. Not like God waited in the previous verse in Isaiah 30, verse 18, where God is long-suffering and adhering to those things that He's already declared in His Word. But here, this particular word, tasada, um, right here, the original Chaldean word, um, once again, it's a verb. But it means something completely different. To lie in wait. To chase. To desolate. To destroy. Hunt. Lie in wait. A uh, primitive root to chase by implication to desolate or destroy. To lie in wait. And you know, I put some lions up here because that came to my mind thinking about animals lying in wait. They'll lay there. Sometimes you can't even see them, but they're out there looking for a hot meal, aren't they? They have destruction in mind. They're going to tear something up. But they're waiting, aren't they? And we can see that three completely different meanings of this simple word wait in God's Word. Now, once again, I'm going to say this. If you're not dissecting the Word of God, you know, sometimes we'll want to just read through so we can read a bunch of words and, and, and try and get through a whole chapter. But, you know, there are times where we might need to just sit on a verse or two for a long time. 
and start pulling out a concordance, a dictionary, and, and really breaking apart. You know, English was my worst subject in school. I was a math person. I really despised English. I checked out an English class. If you were telling me to construct a sentence, I could pass the test. I'd watch long enough to know what was a verb and an adjective and all that stuff. But you know what? I didn't enjoy English at all. But you know what? There's a lot of value in understanding the English language and really breaking it down. Um, especially when it comes to the Word of God. God is very detailed and very particular in His Word. And uh, we need to understand that and recognize that. Back to Psalm chapter 27 and verse number 11. The psalmist here is saying, as David pens this, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. You know, Sometimes, um, amongst uh, some military veteran friends, um, we'll say something like this, you got to show it to me Barney style. And now, Brother Antoine, did they say that? I don't think they said that in the Navy, did they, Brother? That's, that's like a Marine Army thing for people that are on the ground grunts. You better give it to me Barney style. And now you guys remember Barney Fife from, uh, what was that old show? Andy Griffith's show. And Barney Fife, they only gave him one bullet to put in his gun, and he had to keep it in this pocket while his holster was over, his weapon was holstered on the other side because he couldn't make good, solid decisions right away. Amen? And so, you know, when I see this here, where David's saying, Lead me in a plain path, that's what that's saying to me. God, show me Barney style. You got to make it open and obvious to me. You have to show this to me in a way so it could be just blatantly before my eyes so I don't miss the path that I'm going to be on. Verse number 12, Deliver me not over uh, unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? That's God's goodness being played out in the lives of people around Him. And he said, praise God, I know God is real. I'm watching His goodness being uh, played out here even before me. And if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that hope that David had, man, he said, I'd have fainted. I'd have fell straight down on the ground. Couldn't take it anymore. And then he goes on into verse number 14, and the Lord reminds us, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And this, you remember how many folks were after David. David was a mess. People were uh, chasing him all over. He had bounties on his head um, from one coast to the other, from just about every land. Um, and he found himself having to be dishonest as he went into some places, trying to, to hide from that stuff. But you know what? David is one of those men who God really showed him how to be patient and wait on him. You know, early on in life, we see him with David and Goliath. Um, but then we see him get unraveled and making some bad decisions one after another after another, trying to do things his own way. And as he became a little bit older, he, he gravitated back to that understanding that he needs to wait on the Lord. The Lord has his best interest at heart. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. Some of you may even have this on your Bible cover today. I don't know, this is a, a famous verse. You got one on there? Isaiah 40, 31 is amazing. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is the same weight that we showed in Psalm 27, 14. Um, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You ever feel weary? You ever feel wore out? You ever feel like you had enough of whatever the circumstances that you happen to be in the middle of? You know, sometimes we could feel like we're wore out in the place that God's called us to be in. And we got to get back out of that. And remember, God told me to wait. And if I wait on Him in the midst of all this stuff right here, and I just keep dealing with it the way that He has called me to deal with it, He's going to renew my strength as I wait on Him. Amen? In expectation that He's going to work on your behalf and on my behalf. They shall mount up with wings um, as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. There's great benefits that come from waiting on the Lord. But I'll say it again, waiting and being patient is not easy for most people. It had to be in ground into my uh, brain cells in the military in order for me to even get an understanding of what waiting was. And I'll tell you what, it's still difficult to do. It's still hard to do. We always want everything now, don't we? 
Anybody eat fast food today? Man, we want to get that. What's taking them so long? Why is the, why, why, why are, what, what do you mean i got to pull over into this other slot and wait for you to cook my burger? And, and wait, I thought I asked for ketchup. Like, what, why, why would you not give me ketchup? You're wasting my time and, and all these things, right? We, if we're not careful, we get caught up into that. Right. Javier. <laughs> <laughs> we all get there. We all get there. But you know what? We can't forget that God has commanded us to wait on Him. And we have to exercise our flesh in a way that we really um, desensitize ourselves to being impatient. That's the only way they drove that out of our lives in the military was uh, they forced us to be patient. They'd send us out to line up to eat you know, two hours before food was served and they'd make you stand there in one spot not moving a muscle. And in the beginning, I remember thinking, man, these people are crazy. What are we doing out here? And you could actually hear people mumbling. And in the beginning, I told you in basic training, man, I was, I was one to shout out things. We want chow! And everybody comes running out. Oh, he told you to be quiet. Who's out here saying that? Well, you know what? It wasn't long before I learned that I better keep my mouth closed and be patient and wait there like everybody else. Or they're going to come back out and make me run around the building until I you know, get tired enough I don't want to yell anymore. Patience is something that really... We have to exercise our flesh in so that we can desensitize ourselves from being impatient. Psalm 37, verse number 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse number 8 of Psalm 37 says, Cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You know, it's not uh, something out of the ordinary that these two verses are put together here. Because if we are impatient, we sometimes start getting anxious. And man, we get those feelings of being overwhelmed. And then it causes us to start be, uh, feeling agitated and anxious. And, and man, we'll be upset after a little while. We'll get angry. And if we're not careful, that anger turns into wrath. And man, we want to do something. But God says, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Waiting, there's great benefits. There's great blessings that come. But if we choose not to wait, and we're going to get all wound up and we're going to respond and we're going to sin against God if we respond in the flesh. Verse number 9 of Psalm 37 says, For evildoers shall be cut off. We need to know that God's Word is true. Amen? We need not worry about being other people's judge. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen? And God is so very good in how He can show us that there are benefits that come from us uh, just being patient and waiting on Him. Psalm 25 and verse number 4. Show me Thy ways, O Lord. Teach me Thy paths. Lead me in Thy truth and teach me, for Thou art the God of my salvation. On Thee do I wait all the day. Amen? Amen? Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5, we need to know that it's God's timing. It's not our timing. We don't get to decide how we want to do things. And you know, we've got to understand in our own hearts and minds that if we would have just allow God to lead and wait patiently on Him, there's going to be great blessings that are come. We can hope in the fact that God's promises are going to come to pass. And we say, well, what do God's promises have to do with me paying the electric bill or, or me doing, you know, we could fill in all kinds of circumstances of life on how we might think that we can eliminate God from uh, that place of waiting on Him. But you know what? Um, God blesses when we wait on Him. He, he can even pay the electric bill. Amen? He can, he can drop some money or, or, or some other way that you wouldn't even expect to come to pass to relieve you from that. We all know that. He's done it for us. And we can't ignore when He does that. There's great benefits that come from waiting on Him and just focusing on Him. Habakkuk 2, verse number 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. 
And we consider those things that God has for us. We could think of things like the rapture and, and uh, the children of Israel actually being recognized as a nation again and some very hard-line specific things uh, when it comes to some events that have happened in time that uh, people have waited on it for a very long time and we've been able to watch them come to pass. But waiting on God comes to our individual needs and our prayer requests that we put before Him. We can't discount the fact that the words that we whisper into our Savior's ear are not precious to Him. He cares for us. We've talked about this. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. He truly does. And as we give Him those cares, we can find ourselves in a place where we can see that He's faithful and He's going to fulfill His will. And you know what? Um, if we're not careful, man, He could bless us in one moment and take care of the electric bill, and then we turn around and all of a sudden we see a pile of whatever in our circumstances and begin to fret again almost right away. After He has just rescued you from something that you were praying for, and then it's not long. You know, why do you think the children of Israel wavered back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for them 40 years? Because they were human beings like us. And we can understand that. That's why God put those events in His Word so that we can get it. Psalm 37 and verse 34. Wait on the Lord and keep His way, and He shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. There's going to become a time, we're reading through it, we're going through the book of Revelation, you know what? There's going to be a time when the wicked are going to be completely cut off from the earth. They're going to be all gone. They're going to be out of here. They're not going to exist anymore. <clears throat> and as God's people, we're going to be able to live in a place that's free of temptation, uh, free of the prince and power of the air, Satan. He'll be judged and, and cast out of the place that we're in. And that's going to be an amazing day, isn't it? But you know what? All these verses that we're reading here that has this word wait in it are represented with the exact same meaning that our very first verse did as we looked at Psalm 130, verse number 5, and Psalm 27, verse number 14 as well. Psalm 25, verses 6 through 9 says this Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will He teach sinners in the way. The meek will He guide in judgment. And the meek will He teach His way. We consider God's long-suffering and His loving kindness and uh, Him not remembering our sins anymore. Uh, God is executing things in a little bit of a different way than we are, isn't He? He's adhering to those promises that He's giving us. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, right? Amen? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of the sacrifice that was already made. And we need to keep that in mind that, you know what, we are commanded to wait. There will be great blessings for us if we wait. I consider uh, the Apostle Paul thinking about men that are patient in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verses 8-11. through 11. The Apostle Paul being one that endured great persecution, but yet was so very patient and endured those things as he went through them. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8-11 through 11, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Amen? We side with Christ. We trust Him as Lord and Savior. Man, there's a lot of things that can come to us in, in terms of life and turmoil and trials and tribulations, um, but we have a rock that we stand on. Amen? Um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, we consider Paul and his uh, waiting uh, uh, patiently and not running off when things started to get rough for him. 
It would have been easy. You know this. Uh, we've all seen this happen uh, throughout our lives. We watch somebody that comes to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, and boy, they think that maybe life is going to get all smooth and everything is going to be perfect now because they're saved, but yet they see they face the same challenges. They just get a different perspective at it, don't they? And we think that uh, now things are going to be smooth as butter and we're not going to have to worry about anything anymore, but that is not the case. We just get to learn how to deal with it differently. We get to understand patience and really waiting on God. And it takes action on our part to wait and hold our positions when we feel eager to move forward, eager to, to try and accomplish things in the timeline that, that you know, we've already established in our own mind. And if we're not careful, we'll allow our own timelines to override that which God has already uh, put upon us. And a lot of times we'll put a lot of extra pressure on ourselves when we don't wait. And it causes us to begin to fret and get anxious. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verses 23 through 33. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren." in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities." The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king kept the city of Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. He had tons of people after him. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. And there's so many things that Paul went through. And I know there's a, that's a whole laundry list of things there. But you know what? Paul learned to wait on God. And so often, um, as I was saying earlier, people will receive Jesus Christ as Savior. And when things start to get difficult and, and start going in a way that may be unexpected, they choose to walk away from the Lord. They think, man, this ain't really worth it. This isn't what all I cra it was cracked up to be. I thought it would be different than this. But you know what? If we wait on the Lord... He will bless us. He will uh, allow us to have that peace and that confidence. And the more trials and tribulations and challenges that we receive in our life as we're there waiting, it desensitizes us to being impatient. That's what it does. I mean, that's what they did to us in the military as we uh, tried to learn that principle. And they did it in a lot of different ways. It's really difficult to wait. One of the things they used to have us do you know, it's one thing if you, you wake up in the morning and you swing your feet onto the floor and you got to wait five minutes before you can get up and go get your coffee, otherwise you might fall down, right? A little, little dizzy waking up, you know. Um, but we consider some of the training they did in the military where they would actually run you and work you out to a frenzy to where your heartbeat was at 135 or 140 beats a minute, and then they would tell you to stand still and wait. That's what happens to us when we start getting anxious and fretting about things. Without even really exercising, our heartbeat can begin to rise. We can start feeling anxious. Some people, believe it or not, even start to feel heart attack symptoms from being anxious and overwhelmed with worry. God does not desire for us to be like that. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen? It's Jesus Christ that's doing the work for us. 
We can have a confidence as we uh, go through these different challenges that we deal with in life. We've got to chalk them up as experiences that are helping to desensitize us from being impatient. We've got to get to that place where we can patiently wait on Him. 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Amen? That's a confidence that we can have. We are the sons of God. There's not anything that we can face that we can't sit there and patiently wait for God to do His part. This is what we have to remember. We're not in charge. Normally when you think you're in charge, you think you've got to make decisions right away and I've got to hurry up and do these things and get them done. And, but you know what? We're not in charge. We've got to submit ourselves to God. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to allow Him to guide and direct. We've got to take matters before Him in prayer and allow the Holy Spirit a little bit of time to impress something upon your heart. Most folks want to make a quick decision. Because we, when we get in the battlefield and we start facing things that are a little tumultuous, man, we don't want to be in that spot normally. So we think we've got to make a quick decision to get out. I've got to find the exit. I've got to get out of here. But you know what? Sometimes that's right where He wants us to be. Because that's where the best work is going to be done for Him. Because as we become weak, He becomes strong. Amen? Psalm chapter 40. Verses 1 through 3. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. There are so many benefits from being patient and waiting because it causes us to really be in a place that we feel vulnerable. And we have no other choice but to turn to Him and to cry out to Him. And as we wait patiently on Him, one of those blessings is, man, He listens to us with a very intent ear. Verse number 2 of Psalm 40, He brought me also up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. The benefits of being patient and waiting is being able to see the victory that God can bring in your life in so many different ways. So different for each one of us, but yet we can see the hand of God working. We ought to allow that to build confidence in our lives where, you know what, it doesn't matter what we face. I'm, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait on God. Verse number 3 of, of Psalm chapter number 40 says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. You think about Paul and Silas when they were beaten to within an inch of their life. And yet at midnight, the Bible says they cried out and they sang praises unto God. And great fear fell upon the prisoners and the jailers that were there because these two men that should have been anything but happy were praising God in the midst of the turmoil that they were going through. Locked up in the inner prison. Lacking the care that they needed to care for their wounds and their stripes that they had on them. Blood all over the place. Tears mixing with the blood. Vermin and all kinds of nasty stuff in the bottom of those prisons. But yet God gave Paul and Silas a new song, didn't He? He, he allowed them to praise Him from even that place. And you remember the result of it. Great fear came upon the people. And when great fear come upon the people, you know what happens? The beginning of knowledge is the fear of God. Amen? People start bending their knee to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and start getting saved. When they start seeing us acting in a peculiar way, expecting for us to respond like maybe they would respond, or others that are uh, living in the world and in the flesh, and they see us responding contrary to that, waiting and being patient, man, they see that we're different. And man, if they know that God has any part of that, man, they begin to tremble a little bit inside, thinking, man, how in the world can you do that? Because, you know, most people know it's very difficult to be patient, especially when you feel like you're in a frying pan. Anybody ever walk on the cement or the sand down at the beach with no shoes and socks on? And then you quickly realize that was a bad decision. And you start to, you know, dancing, trying to get off. And then you get on the hot pavement. And man, it's difficult to stay still when you're in the frying pan, isn't it? Hot sand, hot pavement. But you know what? God wants us to wait on Him. And as we become desensitized to being impatient by simply accepting those victories that He gives us in the challenges that we face, 
we find ourselves being able to just stand there and wait patiently as turmoil is going on all around us. And the waiting on God in expectation to know that His will needs to supersede my will. He has a better idea of what He wants to have happen in my life, and I'm just going to let Him do it. And I'm going to wait on Him. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse number 17 says, And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth His face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for Him. Action items. Once again, as we're waiting on God, it doesn't mean that we sit on our hands, but we have to strive to have fellowship with Him. We have to devour His Word. We have to spend as much time in prayer as we possibly can so that we can understand the way that God thinks and put those things on. I'm telling you, for even you know, for myself, um, any human being, it's difficult to be patient, especially if you're somebody that's in a, a place where you're a, a, what they would call a type A personality. You're used to being in charge. You're, you don't have a problem saying what needs to happen here, there, or everywhere. Man, you've got to slow down sometimes. I've got to slow down sometimes. We've got to remember that God is in control. Job chapter 14 and verse number 14. You remember Job? I mean, out of all the people that are in the Bible, even beyond Paul, Job's patience in my mind supersedes anybody else that's in the Word of God. Job being one of the richest men upon the face of the earth, and yet the devil playing games and, and uh, uh, taunting God, if you will, and really using uh, Job, one of God's created beings, as a pawn and a toy and taking everything with, from him and trying to destroy him. And you remember even, I mean, imagine all the things that Job went through, losing his family, losing all of his riches, all of, all of these things happening in the, in the passing of a single day. That alone would be discouraging. But then to have three great friends come up and consistently discourage you uh, wholeheartedly, together, individually, and then to have your mate jump on the same boat, and discourage and tell you, just throw in the towel, Job. Curse God and die. Give up your integrity. Why do you want to hold on to that? Listen to what Job 14.14 14 says. If a man die, shall he live again? Amen, he shall. We believe in the resurrection, don't we? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. You know, Job wasn't able to see the rapture come, was he? Maybe we will be able to. But you know what? Just because we may not be able to experience that, is it still going to happen? Amen. Are we still going to be resurrected? Amen. It'll be at one time or another, but it's going to happen. And we need to, we need to hold fast to that. Job uh, stayed focused on the Lord and knew that the hope that he had in his word was going to surpass all the anguish that he was experiencing. And if you remember how the story ends, Job gained twice as much as what he had prior to all that turmoil falling on him. And he was already the richest man on the earth to start. But God blessed him. Psalm 69, verse number 6. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek Thee be confounded for My sake, O God of Israel. You know, we consider so many people living around us. And as Christians, we want to make sure that we're living for the Lord. We want to make sure that we're not a stumbling block um, for other people that are around us. We want people to look at us and to be able to see that we have a patience that, man, they just can't get their heads around. How could you be okay while this is going on in your life? How could you just wait for God? You need to hurry up and you need to do... And this is what's great too. is just like Job's friends, man. Everyone's got an opinion on what you should do with your life. If you let enough people in, man, they're all going to give you something about how you ought to handle it. But you know what? We need to handle it God's way. We need to wait on the Lord. And sometimes He has us wait. Sometimes He has us run. But you know what? We need to believe and have the confidence that God has everything under control. We don't need to fret about anything. We need to put one step in front of the other. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. 
Just before that, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All the things that we normally want to worry about, our, our food and our clothing, and where am I going to stay, and, and do I have to walk everywhere, all these different things. You know what? God said, I got it under control. Don't you worry about it. James 1.3 Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith. That means when you're sometimes wrongly accused, as David described in the book of Psalms, where people were, were lying about him and, and after him and challenging him in ways that were <coughs> completely ungodly and really would provoke a man or woman in the flesh to respond in the flesh. But we need to remember that the trying of our faith worketh patience. It's like going to the spiritual gymnasium. Amen? Just like if we choose not to read the Word of God on a daily basis and we choose not to go to God in prayer on a daily basis, you know what happens to us? We become malnutrition spiritually. It's just like not eating all day long. Uh, you do that too many days in a row, and you know what? You start not feeling good. Same thing in the spiritual world. We can't be malnutritioned. But we need to remember this. We're working out in the spiritual gymnasium sometimes, and we need to remember that the trying of our faith, it worketh patience. It's for our benefit. It helps to desensitize us from being impatient. Proverbs 15, verse number 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Once again, if we're impatient, we're going to get upset. We're going to start unraveling. We're going to start making decisions that aren't very sound. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 8, Better is the end of a thing uh, than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. God tells us so often in His Word that we ought to be patient. We ought to wait on Him. Wait in expectation. Look. Terry, wait on him. And once again, I'm going to emphasize this over and over. Waiting doesn't mean sitting on our hands and doing nothing. We have to choose to walk with God so that we can understand the true value of patience as we wa watch him work in our lives. James 5, 8 says, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Amen. The expectation that we have in Jesus Christ that, you know what, if the rapture uh, comes, praise God, we know He's coming. But if it doesn't come and we meet death first, well, praise God because we know He's still coming. Amen? still going to happen. We're still going to live with Him for all eternity. Philippians 4, 6, reminding us to be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. As we're waiting on Him, we need to pour our hearts out to Him. We need to praise Him. We need to thank Him. And if we're having difficulty waiting, tell Him. This is kind of hard. I feel like I should be running in place. I, I got a bunch of energy. Like I got to do something, Lord. I, I need you to show yourself to me so that I could just relax and calm down a little bit. You know what? Ask God to make His presence known to you. He will. He'll do, something, he'll do something that you may consider very insignificant unless you really actually just prayed that and you see God make Himself known to you. I told you about the coffees and the blueberry muffins and the screwdrivers and the wrenches and all these things that homeless people would give me, reminding me that, you know what, God could use anybody to give you anything. They don't have to have all kinds of money. They, they just have to have what you need. Amen? Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. As we're dealing with tribulation and trying times in our life, knowing that the trial of our faith uh, bringeth patience, we just need to be continuing instant in prayer. Amen. And just crying out to God and asking Him to help you to be immovable in the face of whatever you're facing. That you might be used in, in, the, uh, in the way that would bring honor and glory to Him. You know, uh, something happened today. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but they were having a Super Bowl victory parade. And a gunman decided he was going to start shooting people at this parade. One person died. Nine others are injured. Say that again. 
Is it up to 21 or 22 now? So lots of people were shot. You guys, do you know who stopped them? People that were there. Normal citizens. Went after him and just tackled him down and wouldn't let him go. Three or four very courageous men. And I read so many articles of other people saying, I, I can't believe they did that. These people are heroes. You know, I thought everybody in society was terrible. And yet these three guys did this to protect all these strangers from harm. And they couldn't get their minds around how somebody can do such a thing. But you know what? As we walk and we strive to be in tune with God, God may even use you or I to do some things that others would consider miraculous and completely out of the ordinary. And we may not be tackling a gunman, but I'll say it'll be as open and obvious as that was to the people around them, to the people around us as they see us act in a peculiar way. Why would they love me? Why would they... We're a peculiar people, aren't we? Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. We've got to make sure that we don't succumb to the temptation to push our own timeline forward, but that we really truly wait on God. Romans 8.25 says, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And that's what we need to do. We need to wait on the Lord. I would encourage you to dissect the Word of God so that we can really look deeper into the meanings of these words. Wait. We're commanded to wait. We're commanded to look, to tarry. It's a verb which requires action. We have to stay instant in prayer. We have to make a conscious decision to follow God and to stay in His Word and to have fellowship with Him in prayer. And He'll teach us how to be patient as He works on our behalf. Let's have every eye closed and every head bowed and just take a few minutes and talk to the Lord for a few minutes about waiting on Him. Father, as we continue in prayer, we pray that You would just continue to press upon our hearts the great need for us to wait on You and to be patient and to not do things our own way, but that we would do them Your way and do it in Your timing and not try and press through things, but that we would eagerly wait as we take those necessary steps to continue to draw closer to You. Help us to be a patient people. Help us to serve You in a way that would bring honor and glory to You. Bless as we go throughout the remainder of this week, Father. We love You. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.